Network. Thanks for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, hundreds of Zimbabwean lawyers march in Harare, demanding justice for the hundreds of protesters jailed after this month's unrest over fuel price hikes. Authorities are accused of violating people's rights as security forces face backlash over a crackdown on the demonstrations. Also, there are calls for the immediate release of the leader of Cameroon's opposition MRC party. Maurice Campto was arrested on Monday night at the home of a friend in Douala. And a little over a year into the job, and Liberian President George Wee has already had to defend his record. One of the achievements he's been pointing to is the Land Rights Act, which could have a big impact on rural communities. But first, hundreds of Zimbabwean lawyers marched in Harare on Tuesday, demanding justice for people arrested during anti-government protests earlier this month. More than 1,000 people have been arrested since the middle of January. Many have reportedly been denied bail. Dozens who've been convicted and sentenced did not have lawyers. Authorities are accused of violating people's rights and security forces have been widely condemned for their violent response to earlier unrest. Rights groups say that at least 12 people were killed. One policeman who was filmed brutally assaulting a civilian has been arrested. Ryan Truscott is in Harare. He tells us more. Well, some of the details of what happened at the height of the protest and in the days immediately following them are only emerging now. Uh, beatings, houses being broken into, uh, people dragged out. I understand that some rights organisations have been absolutely swamped by what they've had to deal with. And a, a police spokesperson said today that more than 1,000 people have been arrested since January the 14th. In the most recent days, we've also seen a, a program of, of vendor and shack clearances, which again has raised some very bad memories of the, the slum clearances of, of 2005. So there's still a lot of fear, uh, kids too frightened to go to school because of what they've seen, opposition officials in hiding, uh, um, that sort of thing. You mentioned there just some of the uh, crackdowns and violence seen under uh, the current president's predecessor, so under the rule of Robert Mugabe. Um, the current president, Emerson Mnangagwa, had vowed to do things differently. Bearing in mind the country's history of violent responses by security forces, why is it proving to do? To, why is it proving to do things differently under Mnangagwa? Well, I think the big, the big thing everyone wants to know is: did did the president order this? Did he know what was happening and not stop it? You, you'll remember that he was out of the country when the clampdown started just over two weeks ago, and when he came back, uh, he said that heads would roll in the security forces if misconduct was proven. Uh, the thing is that some of the assaults have continued since he said that, albeit on a much lower scale. On the other hand, I think you've got to re recognise that in Zimbabwe, we've had an entrenched system that's been like this for decades. The security forces uh, behave with impunity. Think of the way that the police used to beat protesters in the days of opposition leader Morgan Shangarai. So how easy is it to change the way that the police and, and army behave? What is clear is that what we've seen will make it, it very hard for people and for the Western world to believe that uh, Emerson Mnangagwa does want to change the system. Well, Amnesty International has called for the immediate and unconditional release of the leader of Cameroon's opposition MRC party. Maurice Camto was arrested on Monday night at the home of another politician in Douala. Camto came second in October's presidential election and continues to claim that his loss to President Paul Beer was because the vote was rigged. Witnesses accused police of being heavy-handed in taking Camto in. At about 7 p.m. I saw the riot car arrive. We were with a few members. They started parking the cars. The police were there. They started shooting in the air. They were shooting in the air to break up the crowd. Then they chased us away. We left and they threw tear gas at people. With the regime in place, with what it is doing, this is not normal for Cameroon. We're overwhelmed and if they continue with actions like this, we Cameroonians will revolt against it. Well, authorities say that the MRC has organized several unauthorized demonstrations, including marches that happened over the weekend. Indira Eteng tells us more. 
Hours after the arrest of Maurice Kamto and several members of his Cameroon Renaissance Movement political party in Douala, an uneasy calm still reigns. In several parts of the city, we can see uh, anti-riot vehicles stationed and uh, police patrols uh, and gendarmerie patrols ongoing to ensure uh, that any sort of uprising is quelled. Now, it should be noted that members of this party took to the streets on the 26th of January to denounce what they call electoral holdup. They still insist that Kamto won the 2018 presidential elections and not as long-term president Paul Bia. We met up with one of uh, the leader's wives, one of those who was arrested. Celestine Jamen's wife tells us that he was arrested on his hospital bed as he nursed wounds he sustained in the course of uh, Saturday's uh, protest. Now, it should be noted that despite all the tension and the fact that the whereabouts of the CRM members is still unknown, the party is still planning another protest for the 9th of February 2019. Around 30,000 people have fled into Cameroon from the Nigerian city of Ran. The refugees flocked over the border over the weekend, fearing attacks by Boko Haram militants who'd already raided Rand, Ran in mid-January. Locals say that the extremists threatened to return after Cameroonian forces who'd secured the city withdrew. A little over a year into the job in Liberian president, George Weir's already had to defend his record. He delivered a defiant State of the Nation address this week, hitting back at critics who accuse him of not living up to his ambitious promises to turn the country's fortunes around. Liberia's economy is in tatters, and Weir's detractors accuse him of putting his personal business interests ahead of state affairs. He's rejected those accusations that he's failed to deliver, one of his cornerstone achievements has been the Land Rights Act, which could have a big impact on rural communities. Take a close look. Siafa Curve Town is surrounded by a palm oil plantation. Villagers have lived here for generations. But a decade ago, the government gave their land and the land of a dozen nearby villages to the Sign Darby Oil Production Company. Lacking any formal property rights, communities are at the mercy of international companies granted concessions by authorities. In your bone town, but you got nowhere to swing and get money. You don't got nowhere to swing and get food. Then you are a refugee. In a bid to prevent further foreign land grabs, lawmakers passed the Land Rights Act. It recognizes the customary land rights of longtime residents. Drafted under former leader Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the law passed under President George Weah last September. But it will change little for Liberians already living on agricultural concessions. They are agreed terms will have to expire before that land on the which they are operating refers to the community. So if you have a concession agreement that's going for 99 years, but you have to wait for 99 years. Liberia also lacks the funds and technical expertise to implement the law. Meanwhile, the controversy over land ownership has led Syme Darby to consider leaving Liberia altogether, which could be a major loss of revenue for Georgia's cash-strapped government. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again if you can. Take care.